lot of the water permitting, uh, do the well drillers. Uh, we, we permit uh, the well drillers and, and uh, uh, do all the water use reports when you're sending those in if you have a, have a well or, or any other type of water use that you might have. Uh, some of the other things we do, a lot of things at the water board, uh, hazard mitigation, which is floodplain uh, and dam safety. Uh, water quality, we do all, write all the water quality standards for the state. And we, that means we have folks that are going around the state doing uh, all the, testing all the streams and lakes. And now, in the last few years, we have the groundwater as well, doing water quality for that. Um, they do that year round. Uh, financing, and then we, we do finance uh, uh, water infrastructure, wa um, water and wastewater infrastructure. We've been doing that for like 30 years. Um, and we can do conservation practices such as, uh, as irrigation and that kind of thing. In fact, we're, we're talking to uh, Lugard Altus uh, right now, hoping something can happen uh, in the near future to help out with, with their EQIP program and maybe we can uh, do some low, low interest loans or something. My role, I'm the uh, director of the state's water plan. You all may have heard of that. Uh, it was going on a few years ago. Uh, we do it every 10 years. We had a very big one uh, uh, back in 2010, really. It came out in 2012, but I think the data set was from 2010 that we did that. And I brought some of those books. Uh, I've got several back there for the Panhandle area and for kind of this, this part of the state, the western part of the state. And I can get you anything you want. They're all free. I can get you some others as well, or they're all online for, for your use. And, and I'll be here the rest of the day and this evening. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have about that. Um, and I did want to say before I forget, like on, on the permitting and so forth, I am not a permitter. Uh, or work with the well drilled program. So I don't want to say too much because I didn't know just enough to be dangerous. But uh, we would be very happy to come out to this group or some other group if you guys would like. I could bring those guys out and, and be happy to, to talk with you and answer any questions you may have. Um, and of course, come, you know, call our office or come by anytime as well. So um, we did come out with 13 regional reports, so all over the state. But I did bring up some books uh, for this, this area. So. Um, what I want to talk about a little bit today is a couple of things. I want to give you an update of what we're doing at the Water Board. That's the part I want to fast forward to if I run out of time. I'll make sure you know the latest things that we're doing currently at the Water Board. But uh, as far as, as uh, the Water for 2060 Act, which is something we are, that is kind of everything we're doing these days kind of revolves around that. Uh, and, and it was a statewide goal put out in 2012 when the water plan came out. The legislature came up with this act. Uh, there's, it's it's uh, just a goal. It's not, there's no uh, teeth behind it or anything like that. It's just trying to uh, uh, get people thinking about we, want, we would like to keep the same amount of fresh water in 2060. Was, I'm sorry, it was a 50 year outlook on the water plan. And so 2060 was the 50 year projection at that time. We want to use the same amount of fresh water in 2060. Uh, as we used in 2010 from the 2010 data set. So that's kind of the goal and some of the things we're working towards. Now, that doesn't mean we're using the same amount of water. So we're like, that means we're looking at reuse options and brackish water and those kinds of things. So I was gonna kind of go over some of those kinds of things that, that we're doing here. Um, the conservation grant program was just funded one year uh, but it was for neat projects around schools and, and, and different groups, community groups and things. Uh, we hope it'll get funded again someday. And then the, uh, the 2060 Advisory Council uh, was, came up with ideas and, and uh, uh, strategies for us to be able to, to, do 26, to meet the 2060 goal, and they suggested some funding things. Uh, we'll, hopefully someday that, <laughs> they will get funded. Um, so in the 2010 data set, uh, 1.8 million acre feet uh, per year is what the state uses over all of its different, we look at water use, all kinds of water use, thermal uh, electric power, uh, that's residential, industrial, oil and gas, M&I, uh, crop irrigation, of course, is part of that. And the big users are about a third, uh, crop irrigation is number one in the state, uh, M&I is number two, and then all the other uses make up the third, uh, the third percentage of this, I guess. Um, and by the way, uh, you're welcome to take pictures of this or whatever, all of this stuff is online, or I can get you this, uh, presentation when we're done or we can we can get you whatever you need on any of this stuff. So what was the goal of that? How did they look at that? Can we really meet? Is it realistic to think about making it? So this is the, the just the regular trajectory that we expected to have. Uh, and as you can see, it goes way up. If the baseline is here, that was where the projection was if we just stay on course as we are now with population projections and so forth. 
so just looking, now these were only looking at, at crop irrigation and M&I. We didn't put every use to, to this in the study. But if we use just some moderate levels of conservation practices, we could bring it down some. Uh, and then there is, I'll show you another scenario or is a uh, not so moderate scenario and, and it came down below our target uh, in the study. We think it might be realistic that we could come somewhere in between those two if, uh, if, we can, uh, if we all work together on this kind of thing. So the, the M&I scenarios was just looking at uh, increasing our, our it, this really comes down to awareness, just talking to the different communities. And we have been doing that, working with them like uh, on plumbing codes, on changing how they price water so that people will use water differently. Um, education is such a huge part of it. Just getting people thinking about uh, saving water is, is a big, is a, it makes a big difference. And so the difference between scenario one and scenario two was simply just the percentages. It was just changing how much more of it that we did. And, and again, that really comes out again to, well, uh, us getting out and talking to communities, which we do that. We have folks that go around to all the communities as we talk to them about loaning them money uh, to, uh, to improve their systems. We also talk about how can you change your pricing, how can you change your methodologies and so forth to save more water. And then same thing with agriculture. So this was talking about, you know, shifting, of course, flood irrigation, changing our sprinkler systems to be, you know, LEPA certified systems, those kinds of things, the kinds of savings we could get. You know, part of, we re they recognized when they did the study that this probably isn't gonna happen, that we're gonna shift all the types of acreages, but they were just going for the, you know, the most possible savings they could get. And that's why I think that baseline came down as far as it was. But we do think that it, that could happen over time. Maybe some changes could happen as, as time moves forward. And that's where we're hoping we could hit somewhere in the middle on that graph will be where we need to be. And I will say, I think there's other ways to save water. Well, actually, I think I, I think I get to that in here, some of the other ideas. But the, so these were the kind of the ideas that the uh, uh, recommendations that the, the uh, 2060 Council came up with on this. And a lot of it was, again, outreach, getting best practices out there, making them available, recognition programs, and I'll, I'll talk about some of those. And, uh, you know, just unfortunately, when this came out in like 20, 2013, for, no, I guess it was 2015, when we finally, uh, this uh, presentation came out, that's when we've had all of our budget crunches right then. So I'll just, not, none of this, unfortunately, but I still think it may happen in the future, so. Um, Water for 26, so what are we doing about it? So that's what I was gonna go over quickly, which is kind of some of the things that uh, we're trying to come to do. We are, are putting together, OSU is helping us. Uh, the city of Oklahoma City has a, a fantastic program that they put together for saving water for municipalities. They've given us all of those tools for free. Uh, we're gonna put all of these together along with uh, uh, some other groups that are working with us, uh, DEQ and others, to make one water portal, all the data, all the information you need, how to best water your own lawn and, you know, and, and save water, you know, when and how much to water, plants to use, those kinds of things have come from OSU Extension. And uh, so we're, we're gonna get that out here in the next year or so. Uh, the Excellence Award at our uh, annual uh, uh, Governor's Water Conference, uh, Fred Fisher was our win winner last year, um, and we had uh, we, we've done this for two two years now, and uh, we hope to uh, continue that. It's had some great uh, uh, great feedback on that. What else are we doing? So we have put together indirect potable reuse, the rules and regulations for doing that. That's uh, you know going from the wastewater treatment plant. They'll take it out of the a, a municipality might pull it straight out of the lake that they use, um, then clean it you know, use it, then it goes to the wastewater plant and they clean it uh, with advanced treatment practices, put it back into a stream that will go down to the, the lake that they're using. It's kind of got a loop. Most of those systems that are happening now in the country, uh, they usually blend that. That's not 100%, but that, that has been uh, working to certainly um, Big Springs, Texas, and uh, uh, Wichita Falls is doing this kind of treatment. Um, potable reuse, where you don't have any kind of buffer in between, it goes straight from one uh, from the wastewater plant back to the water treatment plant. Uh, this is happening in uh, around the world. It's not happening as much here in America yet. I think it will begin to happen more often as uh, as we come into more water crises. Certainly, been happening in Israel. Has been doing this uh, for about 20 years now. 
Oh, oh, I should have said that. So we've got a work group going on that right now for putting those rules and regs in place. Um, that just started back in May. It'll probably be a couple of years till those are available and in place to do that kind of treatment. ASR, this was something that we, we did get that this put into place. Uh, Wichita, Kansas is doing this. El Paso does this. Uh, where they're taking water, they're actually just capturing water coming down from the river during times of high flows. They're, they're capturing that, putting it in basins, sinking it down into the aquifer so that it, it's, it's um, full for times when, uh, uh, when water is less available, you know, during, during August, that kind of thing. Then they're starting to pull back out of the aquifer. Uh, we've just got those in place. No one's doing this right now. We do have an application from uh, Ada from the Arbuckle Simpson area. They want to try doing, they're, they're going to do a pilot study for that. Uh, this is the same sort of deal. This was just the agriculture side of this. We're, we're, um, what Blaine County has actually been doing this for agriculture. Blaine County has been doing this for uh, about 30 years now, actually, but it's not used for drinking water. It's simply to, for irrigation practices. And then non-potable, non as you guys are probably familiar with this, land application from wastewater plants, uh, industry, anything. This is just where instead of the, the wastewater plant discharging it to a stream, uh, they are discharging at least part of it to industry or whoever may, uh, a city wants to use it to water their golf course or what have you. Those have been in place for five or 10 years now. Produced water working group. This is where a lot of water could be saved as far as saving fresh, fresh water. We have right now, we've been trying to look for uh, ways to reduce the amount of, um, of disposal, of saltwater disposal wells due to all the seismicity that's been happening. A lot of that seems at this point in time, and we're happy to talk more about it, it's a complex uh, uh, issue, but we, uh, we coordinate that work group. It's interdisciplinary. We've got uh, oil and gas there. We've got NGOs. We've got uh, regulators and so forth. Trying to come up with some methodologies to reduce uh, disposal. It's kind of solving its own problem and the scoop and the stack have become uh, far more uh, prolific and so they're moving away from this line where a lot of that produced water uh, is. But we're still working on that and we're looking for uh, uh, research opportunities to, to figure better ways to treat and reuse that water for other purposes. Mapping brackish groundwater. This is where uh, something I'm kind of excited about that I think we, we, uh, we've got a lot of support from a lot of folks in, including oil and gas. They'd like to, instead of using fresh water for their fracking, uh, once, they, you know, once you use fresh water and you put that down hole for fracking, that's pretty much gone forever. That's fresh water that we'll never be using again. We'd love to use marginal waters, waters that aren't drinking, drinkable anyway, that is salty waters and that kind of thing. And so we're, we're looking at uh, uh, trying to find to map those out. There is a base of treatable water, which is 10,000 uh, parts per million TDS or greater. That, that, those isoplasts have been drawn for years, but they're not, they're, they were just kind of a thumbnail sketch. We want to start going county by county and looking at them in a very much far more detailed way so that it's more dependable to know where, those, uh, where that is. And we just got authority last year. Uh, the water board never could permit a water well for anything greater than 5,000 TDS. You had to plug back up and protect when you got the freshwater zones, when you, got, when you hit anything greater than 5,000. Uh, as of last year, uh, we did get authority to do the deeper or the, the higher, higher salinity uh, zones. We want to use that or make that possible for uh, communities to use that in the future for drinking water as, as a blend. They could, you, know, you can do RO, you can do lots of different things. Uh, and it's, if we can find it, it'll be a lot less expensive. There was a community that spent uh, a few hundred thousand looking for uh, brackish water that they could use to blend, treat and blend with their other water, and uh, they never found it. And it's, it's an expensive endeavor. So we'd like to, using uh, well logs from oil and gas who have offered to help us with this, uh, it helps the communities, but it also helps them. Uh, we think we can make uh, some pretty good isoplasts of these different zones, maybe the one to 3,000, the three to 10, and then the greater than 10, and get that delineated better. So that's something I'm kind of excited about that one. I, th I, I have uh, high hopes that that's gonna happen in the near future, so. Okay, I just kinda wanna tell you guys a little bit about things that are going on currently at the Water Board, if you're familiar with what we do. Uh, um, I, I imagine several of you are, at least. We are, uh, uh, well, I've kinda told you about a lot of these, I guess. The, the, 
the water for 26, the marginal water development is exactly what I've been talking about, the ASR and, and talking about um, uh, the brackish water. That's what we're, we're looking at trying to get funding for that. Um, we have had some proposed rule changes, marginal wells, uh, the standards now, we're going through that rulemaking change right now is what the construction standards uh, will look like for those marginal wells, because you do got to be a lot more careful about that. It's, 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 it's going to be a much more complex um, system for that. Um, if you want to see those, they are online, what our proposals uh, proposed. Uh, we just went through all of the rulemaking process, but they're not finalized yet. Uh, but we just went through that this last month. Um, heat exchange well standards have been changed. Um, I can't speak to that. Uh, the, the well spacing requirements, that has changed. As many of you may know, a lot of, if we have a studied and unstudied basins, for studied basins, we have set, or we will be setting a, an equal proportionate share, maximum annual yield. Those go through a public process before those are set. But prior to, prior to now, those you did not have spacing requirements until we had those set. And the new law has been uh, passed last year that now those are going to, for all new well uh, applications, they will have the 1320 and the 600 uh, foot um, uh, well spacing requirements even for unstudied uh, basins. Um, some of the initiatives we've been working on, uh, technical assistance, water, and so these are the things we're, we are, some of them we're already doing, but we're getting additional uh, uh, funding to support this. Uh, the Rural Water Association has, uh, their, their circuit riders are out um, working with smaller communities. They've been doing water audits and leak detection uh, to help communities find where those leaks are to save water so that they're not using as much um, of, of their resources to produce the same amount of water. Uh, uh, planning assistance, we have been able to, we, we have uh, folks that are going out on a, every month uh, from our financial assistance group and they go out to talk to small communities uh, about their needs and about changing how they price their water, looking for where, where they can save water, where they can save money or restructure their system uh, uh, to meet their needs. We're also on, on, sm on small uh, uh, towns that are borrowers of ours, we're doing about six or seven a year, and the COGS are also been doing this for quite a few years, but doing the GIS system so that small systems will have their systems mapped. And not just where the lines are, but what line types, you know, it's line sizes, where the valves are, those kinds of things. There's been issues, as you may be aware, that you know, when the guy who's been doing this for 30 years, he retires, the next guy comes on board, he may not know where any of that stuff is. Or they don't have, they have it on some, you know, just a single map that, if it ever gets lost or destroyed or something, uh, they're out of luck. Um, so we've been helping work, working with that on that. Um, hydrologic studies, I was talking about the basin studies we've been doing. Um, uh, we've got, well, I'll show you in a little bit the different ones we've been working on and, and where we are with that. As those get completed, we, we're setting maximum annual yields. We've got a bunch of them done and we have not set. Two minutes, okay. And we haven't set a lot of those. Well, we are starting this year, the Garber Wellington, we're gonna be working on setting that, going through the public process to get that set over this next year. Uh, GRDA, we've been working with them to help them uh, uh, model their water systems of their Grand Lake, uh, what is it, Grand um, Hudson and Fort Gibson, kind of uh, to model their uh, systems. And uh, then they're gonna be setting up a permitting system for, uh, for selling water. Um, Tribal, I just let you know, but we've been working a lot with the, uh, the tribes, uh, in-stream flow pilot. Uh, we are currently about to finish up. We finished up our pilot. We're gonna have our last meeting on in-stream flow uh, this May uh, with the results of that. I'd be happy to talk to anyone that may be interested in, the, these, these are talking about set-asides out of a given stream system for permits. There's actually three bills, and we were shocked to see this, there were three bills uh, in the legislature going through right now discussing that very, uh, uh, that very possibility of setting in-stream flow. Uh, every one of them are quite different, but I'm happy to talk to you uh, on a sidebar if anyone's interested to discuss that. Um, we, we uh, Irrigation efficiencies assistance we are looking at, can we uh, set up uh, something with uh, community banks? We can't loan directly to a farmer, but we can set up with irrigation districts or with uh, 
uh, a bank or something like that so that we, the bank or the irrigation district could loan to uh, a, an individual. They might be interested in a, a low interest ro- loan for uh, high efficiency um, irrigation equipment. And produced water research, we're also working at that. So this will be our last slide. Just wanted to show you, these are, these are kind of some of the studies uh, for all the different uh, uh, basins in the state. And uh, these are all the ones we've got. We've got all of these are, are these have been done recently. Garber Wellington's the one where we've already set the May for Arbuckle Simpson and Garber Wellington getting ready to do. And, and then those are in the near future, next few years. So.